Should we be boycotting AI generated music? Now this article was a couple of weeks old but I only got around to reading it this week but the article basically was from the CEO of Spotify stating that AI was a very fast moving space. They were working with record labels on the issues and this was to try and protect the rights holders and the artists. But what does all that actually mean? He then went on to state they were trying to balance innovation of creative works against the protecting existing creators and artists. No wiser whatsoever. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are and consider becoming a Patreon. Okay, for those that have been living under a rock, what is AI? Well, AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. And effectively, basically, whatever way you want to look at it, it's where a computer via some sort of sophisticated program uh, can interpret lots of different inputs uh, to produce an intelligent output. That's probably the easiest way to describe AI. And um, many of you watch the channel on a regular basis know I work in the IT industry and we've been using this kind of intelli this kind of um, sophistication for many years um, to analyse lots of different inputs um, to project an outcome. Um, I mean the number one use of this um, technology I suppose at the moment is really in the cyber defence industry where they're looking for new patterns for malicious code that's embedded within um, other uh, code bases or other um, uh, seemingly in seemingly innocent um, computer objects. Now, my current employer uh, uses advanced analytics, which is a form of AI. Um, to modify maintenance schedules. So we have lots of big plants that needs to be maintained. Um, and we use um, a form of AI effectively to do predictive analytics. And that predictive analytics allows us to target maintenance at a uh, plant that needs it and effectively withdraw maintenance from plant that doesn't need it. So if we, in the old good old days, if you installed a piece of plant, you'd, in, you'd have teams that would go out and carry out a regular series of maintenance, much like maintaining your car. Uh, and they would do that religiously every six months or every 12 months, depending on what the maintenance schedule is. Now with, an, with advanced analytics, which is what we use AI for, we can look at how those um, pieces of plant are performing and we can use that to target maintenance. So if we need to do something every three months, we do it every three months. If we don't need to do something for a year, we can delay that maintenance for a year because that piece of plant, maybe it's not in service, maybe it's not under load, whatever it happens to be, but it's, it doesn't require maintenance on, on the frequency that we had it being maintained. So it allows us to target what we do. And ultimately that saves a lot of manpower, saves a lot of materials, which ultimately means we save a lot of money. That's the kind of idea of it anyway. But that just gives you an idea of how you know other industries are using this um, artificial computer-based intelligence to try and um, save costs. So the next question to ask yourself is why is this actually a threat to music? Well, if you can train an algorithm to do something, you can train an algorithm to write music. So you can write music in the style of the of an artist. And actually, um, the other day, I mean, I don't know whether you've been following um, people like Grimes. You know, she's issued a an algorithm effectively that copies her voice, allows you to put her voice on any music. So not only can you get the AI to write the music, you can now get the AI to mimic the artist's voice, um, and then effectively these AI bots can churn out music at an alarming rate. You know, it's basically, give me a song, don't like that one, give me another one, don't like that one, give me another one. And it will carry on doing it in the style of the artist 
um, based on the parameters that you set it, you could even probably write your own lyrics and then it would write, write the song for you around the lyrics. There are so many permutations about how you can use this AI technology in the generation of music. Um, you're really only being limited by the power of compute. So I'm not talking about, you know, you know, your your bedroom composers, but you know, if you've got a serious amount of compute, if you've got some servers or a server farm or you know, let's face it now, you can hire, you know, AWS and Azure. You can rent it for a couple of hours, load your program up onto the servers, run it, you know, produce a hundred songs, close it all down, and it's probably cost you a thousand dollars. That's where we are at with the whole sort of cloud computing compute side. And the reason why this is becoming an issue is because we're now starting to see these AI produced music start to fool people into believing that an artist has released music. There was a recent um, uh, uh, issue where a you know, a scam artist effectively put a song up on Spotify um, reproducing music by the, the American rapper Drake. Um, and he posted it to a sharing platform and he had millions of streams of this particular song that was a complete AI fake. But he had millions of streams and potentially earned a, a, an amount of money. Now, the way that the streaming platforms work is that you know, you get something like a third of a penny for a stream. So if you get a million streams, you know, you earn about $3,000. But if you think about the fact that you've earned $3,000, probably for a $1,000 spent, you know, if you've gone down the AI route, if you've done it on your bedroom computer, you've probably spent virtually nothing, I suspect. But if you've gone down that route, then, you know, if you can put enough of these out into the market space, you can actually make serious money out of it. And you're denying the artist, the revenue, it's not, it's not, you know, you're, you're portraying to be something it is not. It is not been written by the artist. It has been not been recorded by the artist. It's not been released by the artist. It's purporting to be the artist and therefore somebody is um, getting rich off the name of somebody else. Now, on, in the case of the one I've just, I've just quoted here, um, there is a question mark about whether the the poster will actually get paid because at the moment you know you've got to ask the question does this actually break copyright if the artist didn't write it and the artist didn't perform on it then has it actually broken anyone's copyright um I mean, now, what actually happened in this instance was Universal Music, who are Drake's publisher, issued a takedown notice to the streaming platforms before the song really took off. But it still had millions of views by this point in time, or millions of downloads. Um, but, again, did the poster break copyright? Did Universal Studios have the right, or Universal Publishing probably, have the right to issue a copy, uh, takedown notice? The style of the song was in the name of Drake, was in, in, was in the style of Drake. And it contained an AI generated voice that sounded like Drake. But neither the vocals, the song, the music had any connection to Drake other than it was similar. And I think the argument they've used is that actually impe impeaches Drake's intellectual property. I'm not sure it does, if I'm honest, but that's for some legal boffins to argue some very small points of law out. But if you don't, if you don't sing it and you don't write it and you don't record it, how can another artist have intellectual property? Yes, we've just had the recent issue in uh, court in the States where the estate of Marvin Gaye and I can't think who the other guy was but who wrote let's get it on, sued Ed Sheeran over his um, record. Now, they lost. And actually, I've got to be honest and say, this probably sounds a bit controversial, but I'm actually glad they lost. 
because Ed Sheeran didn't copy the song. Yes, the melody, um, sorry, not the melody, the rhythm was very similar. But he didn't copy the song and the melody itself and the chord progressions, etc, etc, were different. So in this instance, I'm happy that, you know, Ed Sheeran actually won the day here. Otherwise, if this was the case, then artists that wrote songs 50 years ago will be suing every other artist now for a breach of copyright because they were claimed that you've nicked their chord progression. Unfortunately, this is a really, really grey and murky area. Um, in this instance, I think the streaming services probably didn't want to upset Universal Publishing because of the clout that Universal Publishing has in terms of putting artists on the streaming services. But the law in this area is really, really murky um, in terms of how does, how does music generated by an AI in the style of an artist get treated, get interpreted by copyright intellectual property laws. There's also been other, I mean, I'm not going to go into them on this, but you know, you can go through the internet over the last couple of years and there are other artists that have been subject to these AI clone bots. I'm thinking of Eminem, Kane West, around Andy Grandi, are just a couple of the sort of high profile artists that you will get right at the top of the tree when you do a search for this stuff. Where do we think the future is going to go with this? I, I deliberately have kept this SMR short. I don't want to go into the massive ramifications. I'm sure you guys will have lots of comments to leave against this video below. But what you've got to remember is the compute behind artificial intelligence moves forward all the time. As I said, cloud services, you can rent compute for dollars. Um, and if you know what you're doing, you can rent the doll rent it for a very short space of time. You can do what you need to do, close it all down, job done. It's going to happen with many, many different cloud platforms. I suspect there's going to be lots of issues over Azure, web services, Google, and there's a number of other sort of smaller players in this market that will just allow you to rent this compute time. The other thing about it is that what, there's no trace. Once you've closed it all down, you spun it up somewhere else. There's no trace that you've done something. You know, you know, so it's very difficult to track people doing this sort of stuff if you could track it at all. So why bother being a unique artist going forward? Why would you want to be an artist if fraudsters can take away your living. I don't think it's just the fraudsters that are going to be doing this. I think fraudsters, yes, will try and make um, use somebody else's name, somebody else's vocal, somebody else's sound. I think that's going to happen. I think we're going to see lots more of this going on in the, uh, in the oncoming years maybe even months to years. But as many of you know, the recording industry is not what it was. Uh, definitely as I grew up, you know, the superstars of the 70s, 80s and 90s, you don't get people like that anymore. That kind of um, music industry stardom is long since gone. It's very hard to craft out a place within the music industry of the likes of the Elton Johns, the Tom Joneses, the Bon Jovis, the, you know, Iron Maiden for argument's sake. These are legendary acts, iconic acts, but we don't really see the likes of them at the moment. We see um, lots of smaller artists. Yes, they have, have wide followings, but they're not the super acts that we had from the 70s and 80s. And really record companies are just interested in the bottom line. And the sad fact is, if you can't pay back your recording deal loan, you're, you're kind of, unless you've got something in the pipeline they think is going to do the do, the record company's going to drop you. And then they're going to go after you for the recording costs because that loan is a loan. It's, they don't write, tend to write the loan off 
because this is commercial. You know, record companies are not about, you know, giving people chances. Record companies are about making money. Remember that. They're about making money. It was the reason why the record industry bought into the streaming platforms. You know, when the streaming platforms started, rather than try and close them down, they saw where the industry was going and bought into them. In my view, we already have a disconnect. A disconnect between the artist and the streaming service. Artists are paid virtually nothing per stream. As I said, I think it's about 3.3 cents a stream. You have to earn, stream a lot of music to actually make a living from a streaming platform. There is no incentive nowadays to produce an album of material because that's not how the public consumes your material. You know, years ago, you would go down to, in this country, WH Smith's, our price, Woolworths, and on the shelf would be all the albums. And before that, it would be on the, in the record bins. And you'd buy the album and you'd listen to that album cover to cover because that was the material the artist wanted to put out. Now, I can remember good and bad albums, if I'm honest. And again, something controversial. I did not, everybody rated Graceland's by Paul Simon. I remember going and buying Graceland's by Paul Simon and thinking, what a load of rubbish. For me, it was. Other people liked it, I didn't. But, you know, occasionally you had that hit. Now, streaming services allow you to go through the album or through the material and work out whether it's rubbish or not. But you don't go and buy the album now. You just stream the tracks that you actually want. In fact, you consume an artist on a track-by-track -track basis. Again, I go back to Kate Bush as an example, running up that hill. Stranger Things come, came along, Kate Bush running up that hill, used in Stranger Things, all of a sudden, Kate Bush is big news again. But, if you then, you know, a, a great example was um, done by um, one of the guys who was interviewed on the Keyboard Chronicles, that he that then tried to play other material by Kate Bush, and his kids were not interested. All they, can, all they were interested in was running up the hill. That was the only song they wanted to have. You know, Wuthering Heights, not interested in. Which I think is a shame. Babushka, I love Babushka. It's one of my favourite um, songs of that era. The, the lyrics are haunting. Um, so, you know, record companies themselves may be looking at AI generated music going forward rather than nurturing an artist. Think about that. It's hard enough to get a record deal now, hard enough to get somebody to promote your music if the record companies are now going to start employing banks of computers to generate the music. What chance has the artist got? Therefore, coming to a conclusion on this rant, or trying to come to a conclusion on this rant, I suppose, what is the record company, what is the artist going to do? Not the record company, the artist. Well, the only way the artist can make money, in my view, is live performances. Unless, of course, you're someone like ABBA and you basically can spoof yourselves through the avatars of the show that's currently running in London. By the way, if you haven't been to see the uh, ABBA Voyage so show in London and you are in London, it's something you really, really should go to see because it is spectacular. Um, and also being able to sell your music on vinyl, which is making a comeback apparently. Um, so somebody said the other day, vinyl sales actually outstripped CD sales in the UK last year, which I thought was madness. You know, we all went to CD, now we're going back to vinyl. Um, or, you know, as I say, selling your music at your gigs. You know, that's another way. But I do see record companies spinning up subsidiaries that will just, just produce AI-generated music. Computer-generated music to a formula. Is that something? Is that something we want to hear? Is that some place we want to go? Now, I'm lucky. I don't, make, I don't make my money 
out of being a musician because to be honest if I did I probably would be a very poor person not that I'm not poor anyway but I would be a much poorer person if I tried to earn a living being a musician full time but I do see a lot of people who are very very talented not being able to actually earn a living going forward because of the way the industry is going and the way AI is rising to prominence. Now, the question is, should there be laws that say that you can't do this? Or laws that say, if it is AI generated, you must make sure that the people are aware that you are listening to computer generated music. There are people out there who probably shout at me and say, it's the way to go. But I don't believe it is. I think it does the artist a disservice. And on that note, I'm gonna say, Live long and prosper. See you next time. Bye-bye.